Good evening, Bahamas. This is NB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Here's what's making news tonight. The mother of a reported gang leader seeks to clear her son's name. Another man murdered late at night. The United States releases its latest human rights report on the Bahamas, plus a concert to uplift Bahamians during a difficult period. Those stories and much more on the way, and the Kia DeVoe and NB12 starts right now. Joining us here at NB12, authorities are calling for calm in wake of 34-year-old Julian Colley's murder. Police sources claim he was a gang leader. However, his grieving mother says nothing could be further from the truth. The mother of 12 insists Colley was a community man who went out of his way to help those around him. She's now determined to clear her son's name. Vonnie Toot reports. The family of Julian Colley is outraged by reports that he was a gang leader. They say gunmen killed him less than 10 minutes after he left his home here on Price Street in Nassau Village. His mother, Sarah Colley, says Julian was a good man and she does not believe his murder was gang related. Anybody who know him will tell you that. He is no gang. They say the gang was formed in six years. Six years? Six years, I don't know nothing about that. And they always, a gang leader is somebody who they have a gang, they have meeting and different things. He is not a gang leader. And I'm hurt about that. I'm hurt about that. Police say the 34-year-old and a friend had just arrived at a home in Miller's Heights Wednesday night when they were ambushed. Gunman reportedly chased Kali, also known as Heads, then shot him before escaping in a Honda Civic. A well-placed police source told NB12 that Kali was the leader of Nassau Village Gang, the Fire and Theft Crew, adding that he was wanted for questioning in connection with last year's shooting at Baller's nightclub. However, his 71-year-old mother says that's not so. In fact, she believes he was murdered over a woman. The house where he got killed, that's the lady who he, he was like, and that's his girlfriend. So you don't think it was gang related? You think it no, may have no, had something no, to do no, with no, his relationship? Related. No, 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 that is no gang related. That's these girls go around shopping in this shop and the shop in the next shop, and they have Tom and they have Dick, and when Bush, Dick, Dick so full, Dick ain't going at, at, at Mabel, he coming at the boys. That's what it is. Police arrested two suspects in connection with Collie's murder yesterday. While on the scene of another murder last night, head of the Central Detective Unit, Superintendent Paul Roll, called for calm. We ask for all calm heads to prevail. This is not the time now to seek revenge and retaliation. The person that is responsible, who we believe is responsible and suspect, is in custody. Kali was murdered just days before his 35th birthday and five years after the murder of his brother Andrew. His grieving mother described him as a jack of all trades who worked as a carpenter and mechanic. He leaves behind three children with two more on the way. His six year old daughter Quindia cried her eyes out as she spoke of her father. I wish I could see right now, but he is dead. Who you love? I love her so much and I love her for ever and ever. Collie's mother and longtime friend Chad and Brister say the last thing they should be doing during this time of grief is defending his name. Anybody who know him will tell you what type of person he is. He is one of the sweetest child God ever put on this earth. It just says, would you like for about two, two to three minutes? And I leave him, which I know things happen so fast. The one thing I know with Ed, if I ask Ed for anything, I'm sure I could get that. Even if you don't have it, he'll find somebody to go look for somebody to get that for me. And that's the type of person Ed did. Kali's mother says her son was kind to many people over the years. She's now hoping they will return the favor, considering he's left more than three children behind. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Tude. 
Well, less than 24 hours after Kali was gunned down, homicide investigators found themselves on yet another murder scene. It was the fourth murder recorded this week. Superintendent Roll says police responded to reports of gunshots in the Peardale area at around 9.15 last night. When officers arrived at the scene, they found a 21-year-old man suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. What we know so far is that we believe this male was through Union Village when he was accosted by two males who opened fire on him and he ran through this track road just to my left from Union Village into the Peardale area where he was continued being pursued by these men, he continued discharging shots at him and he eventually collapsed um, just across the street here on, um, on Peardale. Police are now looking for his shooter. At this point, Superintendent Roll says they have no information to suggest that last night's murder may have been related to Julian Cawley's death. This brings the country's murder count for the year to 32. Meantime, Grand Bahama police have identified the man who was stabbed to death on that island early yesterday morning as 43-year-old Paul Ricardo Roberts Ferguson of Garden Villas. He was attacked in that area just before 2 a.m. on Thursday. Well, two days after a jury was selected in the Kofi Goodman murder trial, one of those jurors was excused from the jury pool. The move prevented prosecution and defense lawyers from making their opening arguments this morning. Our Jasmine Bonney was in court and filed this report. The much-anticipated murder trial got off to a midday start with lawyers for both sides arguing their case. But those arguments, which lasted for more than an hour, centered on the 12-member jury and three alternates who were chosen on Wednesday. That day, a one-man, 14-woman jury pool was selected after a nearly two-hour process. Goodman, also known as Eduardo Ferguson, is accused of the murder of 11-year-old Marco Archer in September 2011. The Columbus primary student was found dead on September 28, 2011, five days after he failed to return home from a trip to a neighborhood store. Moments after the trial began, the jury foreman revealed that one of the jurors wanted to address the court. The juror told the court that she had learned her mother had worked with Marco Archer's sister at the Atlantis Resort and Casino six years ago. When asked by Justice Bernard Turner if she felt she would remain impartial as a member of the jury considering what she had just revealed, she responded yes. Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions Garvin Gaskin was next to address the court, saying he accepted her declaration. So did Goodman's lawyer Jeffrey Farquharson, who said he had no doubt of her impartiality. But he went on to argue that the entire jury must be dismissed, as the juror may have poisoned the jury pool. After hearing from both men, Justice Turner dismissed the juror. Proceedings wrapped up today with Justice Turner instructing the jury and the case was adjourned until Monday morning when he will reveal his decision. Neil Brathwaite and Darrell Taylor also appear in the case for the Attorney General's office. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Well, in other news, the U.S. Department of State today released its 2012 Human Rights Report on the Bahamas. It highlights the most serious human rights problems as complaints of abuse by police and a poorly functioning judicial system leading to delays in trials, lengthy pretrial detention, and witness intimidation. Other human rights problems included poor detention conditions, corruption, violence, and discrimination against women, sexual abuse of children, and discrimination based on ethnic descent, sexual orientation, and HIV status. The report notes that the government took action against police officers accused of abuse of power and there was not a widespread perception of impunity. It said that there were no reports that the government or its agents committed arbitrary or unlawful killings. However, there were occasional reports of fatal shootings and questionable deaths of suspects in police custody. Tune in to NB12 Weekend for a more comprehensive story on that report. Well, still to come on NB12, an update into the investigation of an alleged rape on a family island. Plus, the opposition weighs in on the COB fee hike drama. They're increasing the costs at COB, knowing that many of them would not be able to afford it. We'll tell you all about it right after this break.